if you get to know other people, if you treat the people around you as people with goals and drives and dreams, and you really interest yourself in, in what other people around you want out of today, out of their work, out of their life, then they'll give you a lot more of what you need for you to achieve your goals. Hey, it's Connor here up in Tibidabo, just walking in the hills behind Barcelona. And for this week's video, I wanted to share a lesson that I learned last week. Last week, I had the privilege, two separate occasions, to be part of workshops and meetings with a group called the Arbinger Institute. And back in 2009, a book that really turned my attitude towards life around was a book given to me by my friend Jolmer called The Anatomy of Peace. And finally, last week, I had the privilege of attending a workshop from the Arbinger Institute and then meeting the CEO, Mitch Warner, <clears throat> the CEO of the Arbinger Institute. And the book that I was trying to find here on my bookshelf before is The Art of Peace. I think I've read every other book by Arbinger Institute here. I've got Leadership and Self-Deception and a book that's really about the theory behind what the Arbinger Institute promotes, Bonds That Make Us Free. And what I want to share, the Arbinger Institute has a very simple theory about how conflict develops between people, whether it's in a family or in work. And I don't want to go into detail of the specifics of the workshop that we went through, but it's, it's a very simple tool that helps you get to grips with how very often we, we are guilty of making life difficult for others and, and creating the fights around us. But I think what I'd like to share is, is a story that came from Mitch, the CEO of Arbinger, and I think captures a bit the underlying philosophy that if you get to know other people, if you treat the people around you as people with goals and drives and dreams, and you really interest yourself in, in what other people around you want out of today, out of their work, out of their life, then they'll give you a lot more of what you need for you to achieve your goals. And I think that the big concept of Arbinger is whether you're inside the box or outside the box. I think today the language they use is an outward mindset is I'm seeing you not as a vehicle or as an obstacle to my goals, but I'm seeing you as a person with your own goals, your own dreams, your own challenges. And if I can help you and understand what your goals and challenges are, then I'm seeing you as a person. If I see my goals and you are a vehicle or, a, or an obstacle for me achieving my goals, I am in the box. And all of the work of Arbinger is helping us understand how often we are triggered to get into the box. And anything done from in the box devalues the people around you. And it, in a sense, devalues the impact that you can have as a leader. But the story that Mitch shared with us uh, last week was when he, early on in his career, he worked for a business that went in and turned around other businesses, and specifically hospitals. And on one of his early assignments, he arrived as an administrator into a hospital that had about 400 staff and was really underperforming. This hospital was not a good business. It was not giving patients good, good treatment. And Mitch was sent in by the company that had taken over this hospital. And this company had a different attitude to change than some others. His attitude was, it takes time to change organizations. And if you try and achieve a huge change in three months, you'll fail. Whereas if you give yourself nine months, often you'll succeed. 
So Mitch arrives in this hospital and his bosses tell him, Mitch, for the first three months, you are not allowed to change anything. You are not allowed to do anything. You are not allowed to come up with solutions. For the first three months when you arrive, get to know the name of everybody in the organization. Get to know why they work there, what their challenges are, what their life is. And your goal for these first three months is to know each individual that works in the hospital. So Mitch arrives and for three months that's all he does. He meets people and he gets to know their names and he gets to know why they're here, what their life is outside and inside the hospital. After three months, his organization tells him, okay, now you can move to phase two. And phase two, he's got a little list of some of the problems that he's identified, but he's not allowed to solve any. What he can do is take each of the problems that he's identified and identify the person in the organization who, whose remit covers that area. And what he does is, is take that person and they both go down and they stand shoulder to shoulder and they look and watch the problem. And he stands shoulder to shoulder with someone from the area and he says, what do you see? And the two of them together see a problem. It might be patients falling off of beds in a certain area of the hospital. It might be you know, bottlenecks at uh, reception. They stand together, they see it, and Mitch, just listens to the other person say, ah, yeah, oof. So Mitch turns to this guy and he says, now, for the next month, I don't want you to change anything. I want you to spend time in this area, get to know the name of each person that works in this area, why they're here, what their challenges are, what their goals are, but don't change anything. And after a month of these individuals each seeing a problem with their own eyes, getting to know the people implicated in the area, then he says, now you can pull the group together and as a group, look at the problem. And the group look at the problem. And now, after four months of getting to know names, four months of getting to know each individual, one month of standing shoulder to shoulder with the people in the organization and looking at the things that Mitch has considered problems, he's allowed to listen to solutions from others, but no solutions from himself. And over the course of nine months, he transformed this hospital from an underperforming medical center and an underperforming business into a valuable business that provided wonderful outcomes for the patients. And I think Arbinger, if you want to know more, the books are a great start for me. The first one I came across was The Anatomy of Peace. Read it straight through in about six hours and just thought, this is something we should learn at school. This is something everyone should know about going into a relationship, being part of a family. How to recognize when I've gone into my box, when I've stopped seeing the other person as a person, but I see them as an obstacle to my goals, or I see them as a vehicle for achieving what my ends are. And you know, this not seeing others as people, there's a much deeper damage that you do. It's not just that you're not being a good leader, it's you're not being a good fellow member of the human race. But the moment that people become out of the box and start seeing the challenges that other people face and helping them see next to you the, what you see. It's amazing the engagement, the resourcefulness you find that starts to come up from the team. So if you've ever felt that as a leader, you don't have an engaged team, you feel that you give more than other people are willing to give to the business, I think it's worth exploring the material from Arbinger Institute. It's quite a simple thing but in the same way, meditation is very simple. Just sit down and pay attention to yourself. It's very simple to do. It's very hard to maintain as a practice. Running, running a marathon, take one step, take another step, keep going 42,000 times, you've run a marathon. It's not the step is simple that makes it difficult. It's that you have to keep doing it hour after hour, minute after minute through the day. Uh, so my reflection for this week, Arbinger Institute, check out, uh, 
what they do. The Anatomy of Peace has a book, but I think this story, if you just really take the time to see the people around you, and I think to me the greatest question to help you to see the people around you is one that I learned from Dan Sullivan. You sit down with someone and you say, three years from today, what needs to happen for you to be personally and professionally fulfilled? And have them reflect on that. Now, today it's April 2019. So in April 2022, what has to happen personally and professionally for you to be in a great place, to feel fulfilled, to feel that these three years have really moved you to a place that you want to be. And when I ask people this question, the first time they tend to look at me a bit funny, the second time they still look at me a little bit funny, but over time they start to give me some clues as to personally and professionally what are their goals, their aims, their ambitions, and how can I as a leader start to put the pieces in place to make this rewarding for them and help them achieve their goals whilst also being clear that those can be linked to things that make the organization succeed. So have a great week. Thank you for your subscribes, your comments, your questions. Uh, Miguel, thanks for the coffee at Starbucks. That conversation was what I needed to switch back on a little bit of creativity, a little bit of clarity. Thank you so much. Uh, I came across Miguel in a Starbucks and I was feeling out of ideas. And two hours later, I had a notebook full of some good ideas. And it was just very helpful to have someone listen and say, Connor, you've got some good things there. Keep going. So thank you, Miguel. You're part of the reason why I'm back making a video this week after missing a few. Have a great week. See you next week.